Hello everybody, my name is the Deuteron Doctor, and today we're going to be talking about how to play the last Brella in our, I guess, trilogy of the Brellas, because there aren't any more right now. The Tenta Brella! Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for, and that's what it's all about. Woo! Anyways, the Tenta Brella is the heaviest of the Brella family, and it is the, in my opinion, hardest one to play. It's an anchor, but not. Let me point this out. It's great for tower control. You could use it to protect the tower. It has insane canopy health. Absolutely ridiculous canopy health. It has insane damage, but it has an absolutely awful fire rate. It's great for pretty much tower control, and that's it. That's pretty much it. If we're talking about rank modes, that's it. There's really not much else that I could think of it being useful for, other than Rainmaker when you're trying to push. As long as you don't have the Rainmaker and you're using Tentacrella, you can use the Canopy Shield to push. But, it doesn't have much use past that. If you see a good Tentacrella player, run. <laughs> Just run. Just run, because I don't know how they do it, but people can pull off some crazy stuff with that weapon. The kit for the Tentabrella is Squid Beacon and Ink Vac, which is probably the best kit for Tentabrella that it's ever had, in my personal opinion. Squid Beacons can be placed anywhere. You can place up to three, and it can help with pushing, which adds to the usefulness that the you know canopy of the Tentabrella has. It also has Ink Vac. Ink Vac is amazing for backline weapons or helping like push weapons, because it's basically another shield, so you have a weapon with a shield that has insane damage basically a teleport as its sub and it has a special shield that fires a bullet after the special is done which is just insanity you can't do the umbrella canopy combo with this weapon same with undercover you can only do it with the splat bow but it's still an amazing weapon with an amazing kit to match. The best way to use this is to fire single at, at single times. Try not to open your canopy unless you are trying to push or you're trying to protect a bunch of teammates. That's the only reason you would need to open your canopy. It's not like Splat Brella. Splat Brella is a very selfish canopy and Undercover is even more of a selfish canopy. But Tentabrella, it's there to protect the whole team. So if your whole team is in danger and your team is trying to push, that canopy, if you launch that, that's going to make a very stark difference in their pushing capabilities so keep that canopy for not just when you need it but when everybody needs it you could use it on inkblot art academy when you need to go up that ramp to your enemy's spawn you could use it on hammerhead bridge to go up to your enemy's spawn you could use it on makomar to push an enemy's spawn you could use it on mahi mahi to protect your teammates that went to spawn you could use it on scorch gorge to get to your enemy's spawn you could use it on sturgeon shipyard undertow spillway wahoo world the possible possibilities are endless for the amount of pushing this umbrella canopy can do. However, it is extremely susceptible to fast-paced weapons, which is half the roster. So if you do not have somebody that can slay for you, you will not be able to take on more than one opponent. It just won't happen. Unless, again, you're one of those crazy lunatics that main the weapon and somehow can wipe out a whole team with that weapon. I don't get it. But, without a good support, you're much more susceptible to dying with more than one person. The best maps for this weapon, in terms of combat, are going to be Wahoo World, Mahi Mahi Resort, Eeltail Alley, and Scorch Gorge. Notice, I didn't say it was good because of the canopy. I said it's good because of the combat. It benefits the bullets to have at least some sort of a wide range, but also somewhat closed off at the same time. It's weird. But you don't want a super narrow area. As much as that helps with the Brello pushing, it doesn't help with you fighting. Only because of the fact that it might be a straightforward shotgun weapon, but if you have nowhere to move, with a slow firing weapon, guess what's gonna happen? People are gonna just walk up to you while you're not firing and kill you. That's just what's gonna happen. At the end of the day, there's no avoiding that. You have to have somewhere to move. And that's why those open but not too open areas are better for Tentabrella. In a comp, I have seen Tentabrella be the anchor. And Tentabrella is good for an anchor, but it's a very hard game to play. It's a lot like Splatbrella, where you have to have a bunch of checks and balances and make sure your ink tank is good and everything. So the best gear for the Tentabrella is going to be load that baby up with as much ink saver main and ink recovery up as you possibly can, because that Brella can canopy is going to eat through ink like my cat eats cheese and it's fast 
If you run out of ink in a battle and you have a special, for the love of God, use it. You have an ink vac. That's like another weapon on top of the weapon you already have. That's two instant kill weapons and two shields in one kit. And that's a lot of protection and a lot of damage. So use that to your advantage if you ever run out of ink. In terms of weapons you are good against, there's not a lot, but there are some. And I know I said fast-paced weapons it's bad against, but not all of them. Like the L3 Nozzle Nose, the H3 Nozzle Nose, and the Squeezer. Those are all amazing. Well, you are always going to be at an advantage when you verse them in a multiplayer match because they have a slow fire rate or somewhat slow fire rate with the exception of Squeezer. But Squeezer, you have to constantly press the button and get a good firing kill mode. Other than that, you have more range if they hold it down. So you have an advantage when it comes to the burst fire weapons. You also have an advantage when it comes to blasters, splatlings, when it comes to chargers, when it comes to the bows, when it comes to the splatanas, only because that canopy is going to protect a lot from them. You also have an advantage over sloshing machine, if it doesn't go over your umbrella, blob lobber, if it doesn't go over your umbrella, and explosher, if it doesn't go over your umbrella. So basically, if they're bad at those, you have an advantage. But that's only because it can protect so well. You also have an advantage over the ranged blasters, like, I'm not talking about actual range blaster, but I'm talking more so about Rapid Blaster and Rapid Blaster Pro because of the fact that they don't do a lot of damage. And yes, they can go over, but their weak hitbox is very weak, and their strong hitbox still doesn't kill you instantly, and that gives you more than enough time to open a canopy. Other than that, I don't think there's much else to talk about about the Tentabrella. I'm the Dunon Doctor, and I will see you later. Bye!